What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about a meta moment I had the other day, when I realized that there was no submarine type ship in Star Wars. By that, I don't mean ships that can go underwater, but a ship that would have the same role as a submarine, but in the space naval forces that we see in Star Wars. The basic concept of a submarine is that it gets to operate in an area that no other kinds of vehicles can. Don't get caught up on the silly semantics here, as there will be a bunch of generalizations made, don't miss the forest for the trees, but in general, a submarine does not work like your standard capital ship. Of course, parts of a ship are underwater, but for our comparison to Star Wars, let's say that planes, ships, and just about every other vehicle operates in atmosphere, with the only exception being submarines. So if you think about it like this, the submarine gets to operate in a different dimension. A ship or land vehicle can operate in two dimensions, forward, back, and left and right, while planes and helicopters have three dimensions, by including the ability to go up and down. But none of these vehicles can go where a submarine can, operating in three dimensions by having its own X, Y, and Z axis, but on an underwater plane of existence. A sub can surface, and cruise around like a ship, but a ship cannot go into the space that a sub can. I think you can see where I'm going with this, that in Star Wars, underwater would be equivalent to hyperspace. Star Wars is separated into two planes of existence, real space, where everything is, and hyperspace, which provides faster than light travel to different points in real space. So everything, including all of your planets, people, ships, and vehicles are in real space. The only difference that breaks the parallel to our world is that most ships in Star Wars can go into hyperspace, and obviously not all ships and planes can go into water. But this got me thinking, what if a ship in Star Wars just stayed in hyperspace, being nearly undetectable by other ships in real space? We would have to make sure that a couple things were possible. In order for a Star Wars hyperspace submarine to have any purpose, it would have to do three main things. The first and most obvious is that we need to find proof that you can survive in hyperspace for prolonged periods of time, and then you would want to monitor real space covertly from within hyperspace, and ideally, you could also launch weapons from hyperspace into real space. Concerning the survivability of prolonged hyperspace exposure, it doesn't seem like it would be any issue. The worst thing that could happen is that your crew could suffer from a psychosis known as hyperrapture or hyperspace madness. This occurred when one looked into hyperspace for too long, so we can just solve this the way most Imperial ships did, by just having opaque transparasteel wherever your crew worked, or just not having windows at all, just operating via digital cameras, and maybe still retaining some analog backups, like a classic submarine periscope. Further reason to be confident that our crew could handle it is that so many freighters spend a majority of their career in hyperspace, and we don't know of any extra preventative measures that they go to, so it doesn't seem like they were afraid of prolonged exposure. I'm thinking about how people that work with x-rays have to take precautions, or how astronauts have to train in space to prevent muscle atrophy, but it doesn't seem like hyperspace has any of these effects. There's no evidence that people who spend long periods in hyperspace are any more affected by those who just make periodic jumps. Now it gets a bit trickier, so we know our ship could just stay in hyperspace and still survive, and we'll just ignore and not tell our crew about the threat of the Star Weird. But now it gets a bit trickier, because if we can't collect intelligence from real space, or launch some armament, then really what's the point? Luckily, we can feel confident about collecting intelligence from some ships, via a phenomenon called the Mass Shadow. Though separate planes of existence, massive bodies in real space do perturb hyperspace to a degree that they would affect ships in hyperspace. This shadow generated by large masses would have to be detectable by ships while in hyperspace, since this technology already exists in Nava computers and astromechs, whose most important job was to calculate hyperspace routes that avoid these mass shadows, as failing to do so would smash a ship to pieces. Usually these mass shadows are generated by planet and moon-sized objects, but even large comets and asteroids make them, so definitely something like a large capital ship or fleet of smaller ships should be detectable from inside of hyperspace. Luckily for our hyperspace sub, it doesn't seem like there is any tech that could detect other ships in hyperspace. In fact, this is what was so revolutionary about the hyperspace tracking abilities of the supremacy used by the First Order, which was based off of highly theoretical concepts developed by the Empire. And even this tech may not tell you if a ship is in hyperspace, it may just tell you when and where a ship exits into real space. Also important for this surveillance use of our Star Wars submarine is that hyperspace maps directly onto real space with every point in the real corresponding to the hyper. So in theory, one could travel around in hyperspace, cross-reference every mass shadow that they detected to a galaxy map of known objects in real space, and anything that was out of place 
would have to be a large ship or fleet of ships. But how could we fire at the source of these mass shadows from within hyperspace? I think that this could be easily done by having armament equipped with their own hyperdrives. To be cost effective, these could just be the lowest class hyperdrive available, as we just need the ability to enter back into real space, and could either have lock-on tech based on the signature of the target ship, or just have such a large payload that it has a wide area of effect. This also got me thinking about how large bombs are so rare in Star Wars. On screen, the biggest might just be the seismic charge, but in other material, from the Mandalorians during the Old Republic era, up to the Ninka Corvette in The Last Jedi, we do have massively powerful nuclear bombs in Star Wars. Depending on your opinion of the hyperdrive kamikaze scene from Episode 8, you may love or hate what I'm about to say, but our Star Wars submarine could just fire hyperdrive vessels at the source of the mass shadow, reverting back into real space over a grid, so that you can be sure to hit it, and nearly guarantee the destruction of the enemy ship, as our fired vessels would appear inside of the ship, appearing to the enemy crew to just teleport into place, causing catastrophic explosions as this matter attempts to occupy that same space. So I think we have covered how this could work, preventing hyper-rapture with either no windows or treatment to the transparasteel, allowing for data collection by cross-referencing mass shadows with a known map, and having weaponry that was either hyperdrive-enabled nukes or swarms of hyperdrive kamikaze vessels. The only thing that I wanted to add is that I am intentionally not looking at the ramifications of this ship, that this is more of a thought experiment that stemmed from me working on a video on the Anaxis War College system, which is the in-universe way that Navy vessels were classified in Star Wars, and it hit me that I have never considered the fact that there are no submarines in Star Wars. So remember, this video is just going over how it could work, and how it might be implemented, and yes, I do get that it won't be called a submarine, as it isn't under the marine, the ocean, but I really don't know what it would be called, as using this same naming style, it should just be called a hyperspace, which would be a very confusing classification of ships. So let me know what you guys think about my ideas for how this ship could work, let me know if I missed anything to consider from lore, or things that you think should be added to this ship. And definitely let me know if you think a submarine type of ship should be introduced into Star Wars. But most important of all, remember, don't look directly into the dark reaches of hyperspace. You might burn out your mind's eye. And the Force will be with you. Always.